All right, let's get into our video. This is part three of several parts concerning Hall Effect devices. Now we're going to look at the Hall Effect latch. We have already explored the Hall Effect analog sensor and the Hall Effect switch. And now we're going to be looking at the latch, how it's built, how it differs from a switch, and applications. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Please hit the subscribe button and please give me a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. All right, now let's take a look at actual live videos of the circuit that I constructed. Then we will look at the uh, diagram and how it operates. All right, what you see before you is a comparator circuit constructed from a 741 op amp, and it is tied into this ratiometric Hall effect sensor, and I've constructed another type of Hall latch. South pole of the magnet on the Hall sensor, LED comes on and stays on, north pole turns it off, south pole on the face turns it on, north pole on the face turns it off. All right, what we're doing here is a voltage check on my LM311 hysteresis compensated comparator circuit. I'm using it to emulate by changing the uh, hysteresis to turn a simple switch into a hall latch. Look in the meter, you'll see that it's set uh, to 7.15 volts. This is due to this, these resistor comp combinations I'll discuss in the uh, schematic, but for right now, south pole of magnet as we put the magnet near the hall switch it switches on the LED and you notice the voltage the feedback reference voltage has changed when I approach the hall sensor with the north pole it turns off so what happens the feedback resistor will change the value of V reference uh, depending on whether it is on or off. So once again quickly the LED is off the V reference voltage is 7.15 south pole of magnet turns on the comparator it drops to 5 use the north pole and turns it off. We'll discuss this in the schematic in more detail. All right, here is the schematic once again. Uh, same circuit as I used in the uh, switch. Here's your analog hall sensor, a TL173, an LM311 comparator. In the original, when I had it as a switch, R4 was a 100K feedback resistor from the output to the reference in. Now we're going to change that to a 22K resistor and I'm going to radically shift the hysteresis points. All right, let's look at our hysteresis points once again. This was the switch over here. The B, of course, stands for magnetic flux. So your B operate point was set for 6.82 volts, and the B release point was 6.32 volts. You notice that both values are above the quiescent point at one half VCC. So it switches on here, and it will stay on as long as the flux is equal to or greater for B op but as the flux is pulled away 
it won't switch off until it reaches the uh, B release point and this gives us a total hysteresis of 0 0.5 volts now we're going to ch completely change this when I change that resistor out I greatly shift it the hysteresis point B operate is pretty much where it was before uh, somewhat different the B operate point is now 7.4 volts and the B release point was 5.48 volts alright and so you turn it on it's turned on uh, about a volt and a half above the quiescent point at 6 volts and to turn it off as you saw in the videos I had to flip the magnetic polarity around to drive the voltage below the quiescent point to 5.48 volts and that gives me a hysteresis of 1.92 volts all right here is a simplified diagram of how the resistors operate other than the value of the 22k replacing the 100k it works pretty much the same so all right let's look at a commercial hall effect latch uh, it's the SS 400 series it includes several different devices latches and switches the thing to note um, the operating voltage is from 3.8 volts DC to 30 volts DC here is your relationship of your magnetic fields or whatever I'm going to stick here with the TO92 which is what I use I own a bunch of these here is your printed this is the label side or printed face if you approach it with the south pole of the magnet the output transistor that we saw earlier goes low because the Smith trigger switches on and uh, when you pull the magnet back the Smith trigger stays on because it is and that's the way it's biased as I explained earlier then I have to reverse the magnet go back to the face and when it drops to the B release point below the Q point the output will go high because the output transistor switched off and the uh, Smith trigger switched off so South Pole switches on Smith trigger somewhere above the Q point and it stays that way until I enter the uh, approach the face with the North Pole that drives it below the Q point to the B release point and the LED goes off this is a far more sophisticated hall latch it's the DRV 5013 it is manufactured by I think Texas Instruments here we have a whole lot of biasing and sensitivity circuits we have the power supply the Hall element some offset electronics here again is your differential amplifier here is your Schmidt trigger with its reference voltage the output in this case though is an open drain in channel MOSFET you can see the uh, package style up here and down here yeah it's the diff it's the mark side mark side from the top there's your little plate and here is your uh, output state um, B operating point is above the Q point they call it B off I call it Q and B release point that's with the North Pole is somewhere below Q here is a package this is how this is connected um, you have a this is the output you put a 10k pull-up resistor on it and so forth already again note that your magnetic flux B has to be perpendicular to the hall plate as you see here the reason you see an arrow is under physics theory your magnetic lines of force flow from north to south which is considered negative to positive 
as you see here this is the printed face this is looking down at it from the top there's your hall sensor is probably your hall plate is in the middle and so forth this is a TO92 case over here is the printed face north to south you put the south pole of the magnet here on the printed face which is showed here and it will switch it depends on again on what it is if it's an analog switch the south pace the south pole will increase the voltage on an analog the north pole will decrease the voltage if it's a switch the south pole will turn it on after it gets somewhat of a measured distance pull it away it turns off and then if you have a latch here comes your south pole switches on you have to pull it away reverse the polarity where the voltage will drop to the uh, B release point all right let's look at how hall latches are used in mode in brushless motors here is an approximate here are three hall sensors this is some kind of circuit board here is your stator which has coils of wire that are activated turned on and off by various electronic switching circuits and here is your rotor your rotor has alternating north south poles and so when this thing begins to rotate the south pole on the face will turn on the hall sensor and you will get a high oh, in, this, in the cases of the ones I used it will go for a low output yet when the north pole comes up as the thing is rotating it'll switch it back off and that's how you create a square wave output and these three and these are offset in such a way that the electronics can tell motor speed position and so forth here's another illustration of three hall sensors and this is a DC motor you might see this for instance used to, in an electric vehicle but here are your three hall sensors there are magnetic domains in this rotor there's your windings and the information is fed back to control logic which runs a driver circuit a common place that you're going to find your uh, brushless DC motors are in VCRs now they don't make VCRs anymore or at least the VHS types they went over to digital DVDs but this is a brushless DC motor and so this is called the capstan motor and this is the head this also rotates the heads If you take the capstan motor apart, you have a ferrite ring magnet has alternating south, north, south, north domains all the way around it. There is the shaft. Here is the co six coils are switched on and off through the electronics to rotate this um, flywheel and maintain its speed it has to maintain the speed as it pulls the tape past the rotating heads to keep the picture from jittering and so forth if you look close right here at a blow up of the coil board here are your three hall sensors Another interesting use for hall sensors is in liquid flow meters. This one's for water. It has a hall sensor and it has a propeller that, that has probably a small magnets attached to it. As the water flows through the device, the propeller spins. The magnets switch on and off the uh, hall latch or switch or whatever it's using. I don't know how well you can see this. Here's somebody using one of these attached to an Arduino to read water flow on a very miniature um, LCD display. Here is another version of this. This is another flow meter that uses a hall sensor. 
This I found on Amazon. Here's a view of another different type. And it's see and your um, hall sensor, be it a latch or a switch or whatever they're using, is sealed and waterproof. The water flows through it. Here is a view off of the end. Down there is your little propeller, has some magnets or whatever attached to it. And as the propeller spins, based on the water flow and its speed, you can tell the flow rate and how much water moved through the device by counting the pulses off the hall switch. All right, that completes this tutorial on the operation and use of Hall Effect latches. I have more coming and where, we will, where we are going to discuss more circuits. Thanks for listening. Please hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.